Hello everyone. Well, all five of you who are here. Waiting for another three. Hello James, how are you? <clears throat> I do have the Discord open. So don't worry, you are right next to me on my laptop. I can read that. And I'll be reading your questions pretty soon. Uh, as you all know tonight, I'm recording. And that is for my own use, so... I'll be using this for a, a bit of evidence for some training that I'm doing, for a course that I'm doing, my Masters. Thank you very much for agreeing to that. Hello, Lucy. How's it going? Amy should be along, she said, momentarily. How is everyone this evening? Hmm, yeah, I mean... This subject was brought up quite a lot because writing is such a... It's a burden. It really is. It's really, really, really difficult to do, especially when you have no idea how to start. And so, yeah, that, hopefully that's what we're going to be doing. So, six people now. That's great. Seven. One more. I think it's Jason. He's always late. There he is. <laughs> Alright, good evening. Alright, hello. So, um, we can get started. Uh, don't forget, there is a drop box right there for your questions, so make sure you put that in. Um, and any question, I will stop after about 10 minutes to answer some questions. Uh, but there will also be a long period at the end of the session for questions as well. Okay, so don't, don't worry too much about... Um, I'd rather you... Uh, something that I did in university, I was told, was please listen to the lecture and then give us questions, you know? So I'd rather you, you listen to the lecture nice and peacefully, just chilled out, give it your full attention, and then ask questions at the end. Uh, but we will have a bit of time halfway through for questions. So, opening hooks to your fiction. So if you're writing a piece of fiction, you're writing a book, you're writing a short story, you're writing an essay, even. Um... The best pieces of literature always have good opening hooks. What is an opening hook? Well, an opening hook is essentially, it's the start of a book. It's the start of a piece of work, quite simply. Um, but what it should do is keep your work from going into an editor's dustbin if you send it in to them, essentially. So let's, uh, let's have a little look first on what the hell is going on with our opening hooks. So, what is a good opening hook? Well, first of all, it should arrest your audience. So it should be eye-catching. It should be something that really, really pulls you in straight away. And don't worry, I do have an example. I'm not just talking things up and giving you willy-nilly advice. I do actually have an example. But an opening hook should arrest your audience. It should pull you in. It should give you um, a definite sense of the world and what is going on. What is going on in your story? Who's talking? Yeah? It should show and not tell. One of the big things in fiction is showing and not telling. What we mean by that is, um, for instance, um, if anyone has seen the the new Suicide Squad movie, yeah, put in the chat if you've seen it. Came out a little while ago now. So the difference, yeah, yes, you, yeah, most of you've seen it. Okay, so for, for those of you who don't know, I know Amanda, you probably haven't seen it, uh, but. Uh, if you, those of you who don't know, um, Suicide Squad is an ensemble movie about a bunch of comic book hero villains who get together to solve crime, okay? Essentially. So, in each in each of these heroes, in each of these villains, they have their own hooks, they have their own character arcs, okay? In Suicide Squad, you are told who these people are. You're basically told who they are and you're told what their, what their personalities are. You see no evidence for those personalities, okay? So Deadshot, for example, um, you see that he is, you know, an, an honor you're told he's an honorable assassin. You never see him being such. He just turns up and he's honorable assassin person, yes? Whereas in the something like The Dark Knight, you're shown from the start who Bruce Wayne is, what he's all about. We show you who he is. We don't tell you who he is. We show you who he is. Um, but that is, that is a boiled down example of what's going on here, but you will get a better example when I take you through the best opening hook I've ever seen in this session. So, show, do not tell. Okay. Bring the reader along, do not dictate to them, is what, what we're saying there. An opening hook explains your premise. So, 
linking back into showing and not telling, an opening hook will explain your premise. And what this means is, is that the very soul of your piece of work, whether it's fiction or non-fiction, will be explained in the opening passage or two of your work. It should um, op outline everything. So when you've been told how to do essays in academic, uh, in the academic uh, writing classes that we've done, okay, uh, an introduction, a middle, and an end. Well, your introduction is your opening hook. That is your opening hook. And whilst in academic, well, in academia, we tell you to basically explain your essay right from the start. We don't want to do that in a piece of fiction, of course. You know, we we don't want to be giving away the ending of the story. Uh, but what we do want to do is establish the tone and establish the premise. So, um, it, it, uh, for instance, if Lord of the Rings was written now, uh, you wouldn't start off with, you know, in a hole in, in, a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Um, you just wouldn't say that because it, it wouldn't work. It doesn't explain anything about the story. It just explains this, where this one person is living. Uh, there would be another line about... It would seem quite old hat now, but about destiny and things like that. And number four, an opening hook acts as a window into your world. So this is more for the fiction writers among you. I know most of you are fiction writers. So an opening hook should act as a window into your world. It should be um, something that is the tone of the world. So if I'm writing a steampunk setting, I'm writing a book about airships and gears and grenades and rifles and things like that, I do not want to start my book with a cyberpunk decking person plugging their brain into a mainframe okay that doesn't it just confuses the issue what you want to do is boil down your setting boil down what you want to say and that should be on your opening hook okay now i've talked a good game here haven't i i've talked a pretty good game but i've not given you any opening hooks to actually actually look at we will get to that right now so not many writers get to do perfect opening hooks. I don't know many of them myself. The One of the best ones I know, I know Stephen King has done it at least once because he wrote this line in a book called The Gunslinger. So, he wrote, The man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. Okay? So, I'm going to hold here for a, a minute or two just so we can get a, a few questions in. Okay? I know there's there's two already. One of them I will leave to the end because that is an ending question. Plonk that over there. So, uh, da, 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 da. Amanda asks how how long should an opening hook be? An opening hook can be as long as you want it to be, but as we will go over later on in the session, uh, the shorter an opening hook hook is, the more punchy it is. The what you're seeing in front of you is the best opening hook I've ever seen simply because of how small it is. It is one line of text. Okay? There is no fat on that sentence. So the smaller you can make it, the better. George R. R. Martin, if anyone's read uh, Game of Thrones, he does a very good opening hook after the prologue. The prologue's a bit wacky. Um, but after the prologue, when the Stark children are finding a load of uh, wolf, uh, wolf cubs, die wolf cubs, in the, in the snowy forest, that is a story that he's thought of um, even before the books. That was the first thing he thought of that he wanted to write about was that one scene. Um, so his opening hook actually takes place over a couple of pages, which is much like the writer himself. He's a very obtuse writer. You know, he, wh wh Why say things in one sentence when you can say it in ten, essentially? Um, but it's still a good opening hook. It still hooks you in. I wasn't going to put you through that, <laughs> reading a full uh, two to three pages of that, but... This is the perfect one. So uh, I, I would say the shorter the better there, Amanda. The shorter the better. So Jason, um, can you start off with dialogue? You can start off a, an opening hook with dialogue. I've seen it done before. I wouldn't, personally, start off an opening hook with dialogue uh, because you're then running into the Tarantino problem of movie of movie, of movie movies. When uh, um, starting... Movies are very fast-paced, okay? So they're coming at you a million miles an hour in terms of information. Um, a book is much more patient. You're much more... You're going along with the flow very, very gradually. So I, I really wouldn't suggest that you start off a book in the middle of, an, of a conversation. Lots of writers do it. It irks me. It annoys me. Because at the end of the day, uh, what we're trying to do with an opening hook is make sure that the writer comes along with us. Now, if you already have an audience, if you're someone like a Stephen King or you're someone like a, a Joe Abercrombie, 
and you, you people have bought your book because it's you writing it, then fair enough, start your book with in the middle of a conversation because you can trust that your reader will come along with you. But none of you, as far as I'm aware, are famous writers just yet. So what I would do is avoid that trope for now because whilst Tarantino is is may, 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 may be very clever by doing this in his stories, he does this in, uh, in Pulp Fiction, for example, he does it in Reservoir Dogs, where the movie starts in the middle of a conversation, the reader or the audience member has to play catch-up then, right? And has to be very in tune with what's going on. If you start a book like that, it's very, very, very improbable that you're not explaining very much, yeah? Um, unless you're an extremely good writer explaining things offhandedly through conversation. So, um... Chapters, sure. Start chapters off in the middle of a conversation, but you're a book? No, I wouldn't I wouldn't start it in the middle of a conversation. I wouldn't start your 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 the story that you're sending into an editor in the middle of a conversation because he'll think you're very ballsy and if your writing style is if your story isn't the best thing he's ever read, he may put it in the bin. Uh uh because yeah, yes, it, it it is a bit of a faux pas. So I wouldn't do that. Um again, prove me wrong. If you if you can send me a piece of work before you send it into into Lancaster, Lancaster University, aren't you, Jason? Lancaster, yeah. So if you if you send that in to me before you send it to Lancaster, and if it's an amazing piece of work, then sure, yeah, we uh, definitely um, start off a piece of work in a conversation. But uh, a lot of people look at that and go, "Ooh, this better be good. <laughs> this better be good from here on in." So, rest of the questions we'll come back to at the end. But okay. First of all, I want you to read the sentence. Why do you think this is the perfect opening hook? Why do you think so? Why do you think I picked this out? Have a little think of it. For a minute. And if you can do, write some notes down on, on, on little things that are standing out to you. What, what, what are the things about this sentence that are standing out to you? What words are standing out? What descriptive words are standing out? Okay. Are there any adjectives in there that you like to like, like to pull out? I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. What are we thinking? Are there any titles in there? Okay. All right, cutting it off. I can't see whether you're you stop taking notes, but I'm I'm relying on you being honest. So, let's explain why this is the perfect hook. So, number one, what this sentence does, and it is it explains the entire plot of the Gunslinger as a book, from start to finish. In fact, the genius of this opening hook. It explains the entire arc of the entire series of books from start to finish. And if anyone's read the Dark Tower series, it is seven huge books. That don't just cover the, the seven books, but they, they cover the entire anthology of Stephen King's work. And when you think of Stephen King's work, there's, mainly, there's probably over a hundred books and short stories. The, the Dark Tower basically pulls in ideas and characters from all of them into this one big adventure. To end his universe, essentially. And this sentence describes the entire series. It even it even tells you the ending of the series. Yeah, that's how genius this is. As, as an opening hook, I'm not expecting you to do this in the work you're handing in to respective universities or colleges. Okay, um, I'm not expecting you to come up with the perfect hook. I'm just using this as a perfect example. So let's go through and have a little look at why it is a perfect example. So, the man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed. So, firstly, the, okay, fair enough, so we know it, this is a title of someone. The man in black. That gives an image in, in your head of a man cloaked in darkness. Yeah, a man shrouded in, in black. A man with a, with a, with a hooded, hooded cowl. You know, a, cl a cloak billowing the wind. The man in black. It's like a western, like a western uh, a theme vibe there. You know, he's the man in black. Johnny Cash was the man in black. You know, that, that kind of a thing. He's the man in black. The color black. Yeah, it's darkness. It's evil. It's very primitive. Yeah, it's there. So 
the man in black. And Imme immediately, we have our antagonist there, straight away. And, the, and as we covered in previous sessions, the key to any story, in terms of this, is your antagonist. Now, the antagonist doesn't need to be a person, doesn't even need to be a thing. It can be a concept. You know, I wouldn't suggest you do that in your first, in your first uh, stories. But the protagonist is the foil throughout the rest of the the way the uh, is the crux around which the rest of the story will flow and revolve. So, and in this, our antagonist is the man in black. What's he doing? He's fleeing. Yeah, the man in black fled across the desert. He's fleeing. He's running away. Yeah, so it's an action of what he's doing. So now, we've, we've taken that image in our head of the man in black. He's wearing his black robe, he's wearing his black hood, and it's billowing in the wind, and he's running away. So you can just see the streak of darkness going across going across somewhere, going across. Yeah, where's he going? What's he doing? Where's he going? He's going across the desert. All right, now. We have the man in black. We have our antagonist. We have what he, what he wants to do. Okay, he's fleeing. And we have our setting, the desert. Much of the Gunslinger and much of the Seven Books takes place in the wastelands and in, in of another world. So he's fleeing across the desert. Yeah. So we have our setting. Well, look at the word fleeing. Yeah, he's fleeing. Is he fleeing onto the desert? Is he is he fleeing through the desert? No, he's fleeing across the desert. Yeah. How big are deserts? Well, they're massive, aren't they? What's in deserts? Well, sand. Not much water. Is it somewhere you'd want to flee across? No, is the answer to that, right? So we're in a dangerous place. The man in black is fleeing across the desert, yeah? And the gunslinger, so we have another title. The gunslinger. So we have our protagonist. Well, it's a gunslinger. The images that come into your mind, the man with the guns on him, a man, man who's, a, who's a hero in westerns, yeah? The gunslinger waltzes into town and takes care of business, yeah? So here we go. This is his, our protagonist, the gunslinger. What's he doing? He's following. Okay. So, if you can make a screen grab, I'd suggest do so now, because this is what we're going to be doing now for the rest of the session, pretty much. He's following. He's following the man in black. And that's it. That is the perfect opening line to a book. Or the most perfect one, at least, I, that I've ever read, I've ever come across. So, the man in black, this recap, the man in black is the antagonist. He's fleeing, so we know what he wants to do, across the desert. And we know where he is. And the gunslinger, we know what he's fleeing from now, followed. It's coming after him. So in one sentence, I've given you the antagonist, I've given you the antagonist motives, I've given you the, the place where this, this is all taking place, I've given you the protagonist, and I've given you protagonist motive. All in one line of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. One sentence of 12 words. We have the entire book laid out in front of us. Not just the entire book, the entire series of books laid out in front of us. And, um, trying not to give spoilers here, but uh, but this is a lesson, so and I did warn you there would be spoilers. Um, this is actually the last line of the entire series of books. So the last line of the, of the entire series of books is the man in black fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. That's how much of a perfect hook this is. Because it hooks you at the end and it hooks you at the start. An amazing, an amazing achievement by what I would consider a decent writer, a very, well, very, very good writer. Not much my cup of tea most of the time, um, but yes, that is the, that is, this is the perfect hook. But we need to understand why this is. Okay, so questions. Let's do some more questions. Okay, so there's a few now. All right, so. <clears throat> Michael, do, Michael says, do I have to cover every single one of these in an opening hook? No, of course you don't. Um, but what I'm saying is, I'm using this as an example of the perfect opening hook. So this is something that, if you read it in a book, you would be, you would be, if you gave this into an editor, he would be like, okay, this is, this guy is 
blatantly just a, a very good writer. You know, I know exactly what I need to know just from the first sentence. Um, what I would try to do is get as much of this information into your opening hook as you can. Even if your opening hook is several paragraphs, get as much of this information in there as you can. The best opening hook I ever wrote was was basically two to three lines. Um, but this is amazing. You know, you know, I'm not expecting anyone to be handing in work to the universities um, that are that has a, an opening hook this good. Um, this is a one. I mean, Stephen King. Even Stephen King, and he's written dozens and dozens of books. I've only ever achieved this once, and it's in this line. So, um, as you can see, as Ali is is correctly pointing out, um, so well done for that. Yes, the, the every single thing that you need to know about what's going on is in this sentence. Okay, we we need to know. We almost need to know no more. We we could start the book. We could start the main body of the book after the sentence. And we would have missed nothing. Okay? There is zero fat on this sentence. If you cut one thing out, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah? So. Does your hook need to be perfect? No. No. As I've, as I've said, of course it doesn't. Um, it just needs to, to fulfill some specific roles. It needs to establish setting, motive, and context. So, if we go back to our previous um, our previous uh, sentence, it establishes a setting, right? The desert. It establishes two motives: the motives of the antagonist and the motives of the protagonist. Yeah, and it establishes context. The man in black is fleeing across the desert. He's running away from the gunslinger. So, you, in our own heads, we're thinking, well, the man in black's obviously done something wrong, hasn't he? Because he's running away from the gunslinger. Um, but even then, when I was reading this, this sentence for the first time, I thought, oh, maybe he's going to pull a fast one on me. And the man in black is actually the good guy, and he's running away from the bad guy who's the gunslinger. It didn't work out that way, um, but it could have done very easily. And it would have been a very good subversion of, uh, of expectations there. So, that's what that line did. And so, your opening hook needs to have a setting a motive and a context all the way through it. Okay, we need to know what's going on straight away. Um, try and avoid flowery prose. Um, try and avoid dream sequences. Um, dream sequences are a terrible way to open your story. Um, you know, I, I, I've edited, I've edited work before. Dream sequences, unless unless you are trusted. Author, unless you are a, a Tolkien, a George R. R. Martin, a J. R. Abercrombie, a Stephen King, unless you have fans who are willing to come with you, starting a book in a dream sequence is a terrible way to set up a narrative, because it's unreliable. It's not reliable. It's not there. It's too. It's too. It's too out there. Okay. We want solid foundations for the rest of your book. We want solid foundations for the rest of your story, and that's what a good opening hook does. It provides those solid foundations. Okay. Does your hook need to be short? Again, no. Okay, and this is why I held off on the questions, because a lot of your questions are are to do with these two questions that we're answering now. So, your hook can be a paragraph or even a page. Uh, the more concise a hook is, however, the more resonance, resonance and impact it will have with the reader. Now, not every single author will want tons of resonance straight away and impact with their readers. Um, as I said before, George Martin did his over a couple of pages. Uh, because he went for a more allegorical look, he went for more of a descriptive, poetic look at this scene that's going on within this forest where these children find these direwolf cubs. Now, now in terms of, of somebody picking up a book, as I said in, in our next point, the more concise a, an opening hook is, the more likely it is to attract attention, the more likely it is to paint a picture in someone's head. So if your reader picks up a picture book up and sees a line that paints a picture in the head, they will be intrigued. It's impossible not to be. That's why they picked up your book, okay? If they see a dry and generic line about destiny or a dream sequence, the book may go back on the shelf, okay? So what I mean by that, again, your book needs solid foundations, it needs an opening hook, it needs an opening line that is worthy of the story that's going to um, go come after it, okay? If you start in a dream sequence, if you start your book in a sequence where, you know, um, there's a nightmare going on, for instance, um, instantly the, the reader is looking at that and wants to know what comes next. 
But instead of actually reading on what comes next, they might even skip ahead. You know, just to see, okay, this is a dream sequence, okay, whatever. We're not we're not really ready for prophecy just yet in the first in the first page of your book. We want a solid hook. We want here, hey, here is the world. Here's what's in the world. Here's who's fighting in the world. Here's why you should care. That's your opening hook. Okay? So now. Any questions again after this part? Or any questions? Okay, we've got quite a few. In that case, I'm going to move on to questions. I'm going to move on to questions. So, let's have a little look here. Hmm. Can this lead to writing anxiety? Uh, yes, Jenny, it can. Um, that's a very, very good, very, very, very good question. Um, one thing I would suggest in terms of writing and this is the hardest thing to get over, is just starting. Okay? It's okay to be bad. It's okay to write something that's not very good. What's important here is your voice. One second, I'm going to have a little drink here. Ah, there we go. What's important here is your voice. Your voice is all important, as far as I'm concerned, you know? And, and as far as, as anyone should be concerned. <clears throat> your voice is is the most important component of any story. We can't develop that. We can't see what type of voice that is unless you start. So opening hooks are important. Okay? And the best thing to do with an opening hook is make some notes on where you want your story to go. Okay? Maybe two or three sentences on where you want the story to go. Even if it's a short story. Make a few sentences on what you want to do, where you want to go. And then immediately start writing. And as soon as you finish the first sentence, full stop and carry on writing. And those are the best hooks in my experience. In my experience of writing and of reading and of, and of, and of, and of, and of editing work for people. Um, the best opening hooks are the ones where, that are from the heart. They're not ones that have been like, ooh, can I put this word here and this word here? No, they're from the heart. I can guarantee you. And I will link um, a, an interview with Stephen King at the end of this uh, of this um, of this lesson. Um, that Stephen King did not think about anything when he was writing the first lines of the Gunslinger. Okay, um, he literally knew where the story wanted to go, and so he just wrote the opening line and got on with writing his story. That's why it's so perfect. It's not engineered to be perfect. It just comes from the heart. He wants to explain to you what's going on. And that's what's most important. What's most important here is not going into a lab and putting in a few wonderful adjectives into a sentence and saying, ah ha ha, I have done my opening hook in 11 words. Sucker, Stephen King. Like that. That's not what we're after, okay? We're after something that's from the heart, even if it's a couple of sentences, even if it's a couple of paragraphs, something that fully explains the world we're in, what's going on, who's who's about to be talking, and what their motivations are. If you can get that information across very quickly then then the reader knows whether this story is for them or not and nine times out of ten if you do well they picked up your book it's for them okay that's the best thing to do it's the best thing to do jenna okay when looking at things like that so um aaron is it okay to come back and make amendments to uh, said statement um yes it is of course it is of course it's okay to come back and make amendments to the to the opening hook if you wish. Um, I, generally, I, I I do feel feel that you should leave it alone as much as you can. But if you want to come back and make amendments, sure, of course you can, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing something for doing that. Sure, work at the end of the day, and you know as long as you're happy writing it, that's the main thing. The one thing that does come across in writing, especially from one or two people from this class, actually, sometimes is that um, I know when you're stressed. I can tell when you're stressed because your writing tends to take on that that rushed quality of I just want to get these characters to this place by god I wish I was done already um, it comes across like that you know so an opening hook I wouldn't suggest you go back and change it if you were in a if you were in a good place when you wrote it um, because you'll find you know what a lot of the time when you if you write an opening hook and you don't like it there'll be a lot of people out there who do and this is what we were saying in our, in our first session as well. In that 99% uh, of what people say about your writing is ill-informed bullshit. And 
that I, I apologize for using that language, but that is an actual quote from Stephen King. In that 99% uh, of what writers say about their own work, and 99% of what write of what people say about your writing is ill-informed bullshit. It's rubbish. It doesn't mean anything. Okay. Um, the only people you should take real advice from is the people who you're writing your book for. So if you have a demographic in mind, but you shouldn't do really, but if you have people who you think would like your book, and they say, "Hey, um, there's a few things I don't I don't quite get about this," then obviously make changes. Yeah. Um, but your opening hook should come from the heart. And as long as it does that, nine times out of ten is the right opening hook. Okay? So. Um, da -da -da -da. I, I'm, I'm trying to pick out ones I haven't already answered. Uh, okay. So, Amanda, how do we, how do we uh, go from the hook to... What does that say? Ah, right, okay, yeah. How, how do we go from the hook to the main body? So, going from the hook to the main body is... I, I, I would actually say you'd, you'd do it in a, in, a more, in a more flowing way. So, as soon as you've got the, the opening hook out out and into the open, as soon as you've got it out of your system, that's the hard bit done. That's what you should remember. That's the hard bit done. It's finished. You're on there. You're ready to go. You, you don't need to be um, uh, obsessing over it anymore. It's out in the wild. As soon as your opening hook is done, tell your story. It doesn't matter how you transition from your opening hook into the story. If your opening hook's good enough, it won't matter. Like, say, for the, the Man in Black fell across the desert and the gunslinger followed. The reason why it's such a good opening hook is because I can start writing the story directly after that full stop after the 12th word. After followed, yeah? I can immediately start writing the book. And that's what you should do with your opening hook. Immediately start writing your story. Okay? How is everyone feeling? I know opening hooks are a bit of a burr. And this has been the most requested <laughs> the, the most requested uh, lesson for a while now. Okay? Good. Fantastic. Alright. Good. Well, you all have my email address. It's all there, okay? I like to keep these sessions short and sweet, as you know. I don't want you sitting here for hours when you could be writing. So, I'm going to be in the room for a little bit longer, and I'm going to be um, just chatting, you know, do, do, you know um, ask, answering questions. Um... If, if you would like to know, uh, I do have a list of books and short stories that I feel have very good opening hooks. I'm going to send that to the class now on, on the email. And what you can do for me uh, for next time, for next week, when we, all, when we all reconvene, I want you to pick out one of those and just explain to me in a couple of sentences why you think it's a good opening hook. That's a really good exercise to do. Um, reading makes you a better writer. It just does. You know... I would actually say reading is probably more important than writing every day from, to me. So, if we can start doing that, that'd be fantastic. But until then, um, I'll let you go on and get on with your writing. And please email me. I will be in the chat as well for the next half an hour, maybe even an hour, as I do my own work. So, cheers. Thanks for that. And I'll, uh, I'll speak to you in a little bit. Also, um, feel free to say what you want in the chat. It's not on the screen, so don't worry about it. You're all good. All right, cheers.